Hello, I'm Tina Salzer. Um, most of you have finally had the opportunity to either meet or work with you in person. So first of all, I want to apologize that I am not there in person today, but I did not want to miss this opportunity to um, fill you in on the advisor updates for your district and um, some direction that we've given, been given from the state. And I want to remind you that I am here to support you through this process. I am a member of the virtual support team, and that means that I get to help provide you and your district's support as we move along in this process. So I'm going to take a moment to share some slides with you and to talk with you about um, some of the latest updates that we've received on the advisor and the timeline that the state has given to us. So the first week in December, I attended a training at MDE on advisor and connecting both PowerSchool and Infinite Campus to the advisor system. From that training and through the virtual support team meetings, we have been given some updates for our districts and um, information that we are to communicate to our districts. One of the changes include hiring a new manager for the advisor system through NDE who is um, very focused on moving this forward. And so she's given us uh, a timeline event of events um, and a more specific dates to move our districts forward. Again, I want to remind you that I'm here to assist you and to support you through this process and um, to let you know that you can contact me anytime, and I'll also be working to communicate with your advisor or people within your district to communicate any updates or any information that I get uh, in a timely manner. One piece that I'm not sure has been communicated well to our districts is um, what is the purpose of, of advisor and what does it provide for our districts? The state goal is to use the advisor system to do state reporting. So instead of entering details in both your SIS, then reporting it into the NSSRS system, um, which goes to the state, you will only have to enter the information or the data correctly into your SIS. And then it will automatically upload to the state or the data that they need from the SIS. Um, and this, at this time, they are focusing on student, student data. The projected timeline is um, in 2017-2018 school year will be the last year for student submissions in the NSSRS. So after June 30th, 2018, you will no longer upload your data for, for students into NSSRS. It will come directly from your uh, student information system. So what does this mean for you? So what are our district timelines? Coming directly from the state, all Infinite Campus and Power School districts need to be signed up for the EAP2 districts now. So if you are an Infinite Campus district or a Power School district who have not applied to be a part of an EAP2 district, you will need to sign up for that. And I will give you a link for that here in a few minutes. Um, also, Power School and Infinite Campus districts need to be publishing data by October 1st, 2017. And what it means to be publishing data is that they have made a connection from their um, student information system to the advisor um, EdFi dashboard and that the data is going from the SIS to the um, advisor system. They are sticking to the timeline that all districts will be publishing their data by December 1st, 2017. Now for vendors, um, they've also given them um, a deadline of March 1st to have um, all the uh, confirmations of the vendors that will be participating and the ones that won't. So if your vendor is one in question, the information will come out as of March 1st who is and who is not for sure. 
so from the vendor's perspective, um, here is our, our district's um, vendors as they stand right now with NDE. First of all, PowerSchool already has several districts publishing. Um, PowerSchool had some EAP1 districts who have been publishing now for a while, and there are several EAP2 districts that are PowerSchool that are currently publishing. So they're good to go. The Infinite Campus, they are still waiting on one large district to validate their data before they can be officially certified. But once that district has validated their data, they are certified and then they're ready to move forward. Um, JMC, they are actively coding right now. Um, and they're going, to, once they're done with the coding, their certification should be here in the next couple months. Um, and they will be testing then with one of our districts or possibly two of our districts in order to become officially certified and um, moving forward. I did have contact with the JMC rep from our area who will be supporting the advisor system. And he has stated that he's ready to move forward um, in January and February with the certification districts. And... Um, I have also asked to be a part of that so that I can help support those districts as well. Um, Sycamore is another SIS vendor that we have within our districts, and they are actually have set up their second meeting. It was supposed to happen sometime this week. Um, they have all their primary coding done, and their next step then is to work with the district again to get certified. And I have no data as to what district or what districts they're looking for to do that. So what are your specific requirements as they apply directly to your districts? All districts have to be, have a valid SIS by the beginning of next school year. So Power School, Infinite Campus, JMC, and Sycamore really are of no concern, and I did verify that with the state. If you are still with um, Tyler Technologies or Schoolmaster, uh, they are not going to certify with the state. So that means um, if your district uses them, you will need to select a different vendor and migrate your data this summer in order to be in compliance. Now, as I stated before, all Power School and Infinite Campus districts need to apply to be part of the EAP2 system. So if you're already in EAP2, this doesn't apply. But if you are not, you need to sign up here at this bit.ly um, or this link. And I've also included that into the um, schedule for today. So you can click on that and sign up. Um, Per Amy Muling, which is the new manager for the advisor system at NDE, when you click on this link, the last question has you agree to attend a conference that's already happened. Go ahead and sign it and date it anyway. And then once you are registered for EAP2, um, then you will be asked to attend uh, or your... your um, lead in your district for the advisor will be asked to attend a bi-weekly virtual meeting um, that they have on uh, every other Wednesday, which will continue to help your district move forward and um, to get the information that you need. Now, each um, student information system vendor is a little bit different on how we go about or the process that we go about setting up uh, the SIS into the advisor. So we're going to begin with PowerSchool. I'm going to walk you through each one and what you need to be doing as of this time to prepare for this. Um, first of all is PowerSchool. Currently the ESU 8 has 10 districts using PowerSchool as their SIS. So within our within our area we have some districts that are in the consortium and so you've actually paid the consortium to do some of this 
piece for you. So Sherry or Peggy should have already contacted you or contacted the people doing your advisor to set up a time to get your data connected. Um, you will also need to fill out the paperwork that I mentioned before. There's two forms that we have to post on the website if you haven't already done that. Um, if you haven't, again, I would love to come out and help you get that filled out. It's, they're pretty, uh, we use a couple standard forms that we fill out and then I'll help you post them on the web page where they need to go. Um, and there's a link on the presentation that I included in the um, agenda for today. So the non-consortium districts, which we have a few of those, you will need to sign up for EAP2. Again, that's the same site that we mentioned earlier. Um, then ESU8 is going to host a workshop for those for these districts that are non-consortium power school districts. And we are going to fill out the paperwork at the workshop we're going to then load what's called the key and secret, and that's basically the tie that tells the SIS that it's okay to talk to the EdFi system, which then talks to advisor. Um, and then hopefully by the end of the day, we're going to be able to start publishing some data um, into the advisor system. So infinite campus districts. Currently, there are three districts in the ESU8 area area using Infinite Campus as their SIS. Um, Daniel Weber may have already been in contact with you. Uh, if he hasn't, he will be in the near future. Um, we are the two districts that we're going to set up, he's going to help set up in January is Norfolk and Stanton and then um, he's going to do Madison in the third round but he is going to from what I understand he is going to contact you to help you um, walk through that system and I've also asked if if I could be there and attend those sessions as well so I can be of support after he's done with his um, process for you. Um, and then JMC. Um, currently, we have two districts in ESU8 using JMC, and then we have two possibly trans transitioning for the 2017-2018 school year. So those districts, we are still waiting on the vendor to finish uh, their communication with the states, with the state. And once they start testing with the district, um, then then we'll start working on the paperwork that I mentioned above for the power school and infinite campus districts and then eventually we'll start publishing and I'm going to be working closely with the JMC representative to um, find out how they want to go about doing that and I think we'll start working through that process as soon as they start to uh, certify their data with a district and I will be getting back to you all on that. Um, Sycamore, we currently have one district within our ESU8 using Sycamore and basically with them right now again we're waiting on the vendor to finish their communication with the state and so once they do that then they're going to start testing with a district and again I have not heard what district they are testing with so if you have a Sycamore contact for me I would love to get that contact information and I will reach out to them to see what they're thinking of for um, the districts to work to certify with. Um, then once that process is underway we can start working on the paperwork and eventually apply to publish the data from the SIS. So um, what is your, what is the support from our area from the ESU going to look like for your districts? And, and what can I provide? Um, well, first of all, I have to mention that in order to make any contact with your SIS, um, they will request that I have an instance within your um, account. And so basically that means that I have an email, um, a username and a password within your system um, that certifies me as a um, contact person. Um, if you choose not to do that, that's fine too. I just have to refer back to the support with directly within your district in order to make any contacts there. 
Um, I, I also, um, if you have a meeting or set up a meeting with your SIS in relation to advisor, I would love to be a part of that. So again, so that I can help you um, throughout the whole process once the, the vendor is done with their piece and then I can help connect you beyond that to the advisor and, and hopefully keep your advisor working as it should be. Um, I'm also going to work very hard on keeping you and your districts updated on any information that comes down from the state or from our virtual support team meetings. Um, hopefully in a very timely manner as soon as we get that, we'll get those out to your um, advisor support within your district. And please, again, if you have any questions or anything that I can help you with or any information you want to know more about, just contact me. Um, my email address is on the screen, or you can talk, um, call, um, or just ask any questions you might have. And I'm looking forward to working with you on this, and I'm excited to be a part of the team. I hope the information in my presentation made sense to you. Um, but again, if it doesn't, please reach out to me, and um, I will get your questions answered. And again, I apologize for not being there in person. Tis the season for sick kiddos. So um, thank you very much for your time. And uh, again, I look forward to working with you.